Hey everyone, Mr. Newman here, and next thing we're going to learn about are trig equations. Make sure you feel comfortable with inverses and with 5.1 and 5.2, the trig identities, because we're going to use both of those uh, very frequently throughout this video. So, first thing we have to do is we need to solve for x. One of the things you'll notice about these equations is a lot of time we're just solving for the trig function and treating it like its own variable. So you see there, I've got sine of x plus the square root of two equals negative sine of x. I'm gonna get x by itself, but in order to do that, I need to get sine of x by itself. So let's combine terms. Let's add sine of x to both sides, and you get two sine of x plus root two equals zero. Then I'm gonna get uh, move the root two away from this two sine of x and divide by two, and now I've got sine of x by itself. Once I'm to this stage, now I can do the inverse trig. And I know that if sine of x equals negative root 2 over 2, x equals the inverse sine of negative root 2 over 2. Whichever of these equations you like using better, they really mean the same thing. Because we have to think about our, uh, in order to find x, we've got to think about our unit circle. And I'm looking for, all right, where is the y value negative root 2 over 2? And one of those places is at negative pi over 4. So my x value is negative pi over four. The other place that it happens is at three pi over four. And honestly, you wanna check and see where the question is asking about the domain. Sometimes they say, uh, find all the solutions, and I'll show you guys how to do that on a later problem. Sometimes they say, oh, from zero to two pi, in which case this would be the correct solution. Uh, sometimes they say from uh, negative pi over two to pi over two, in which case this would be the correct solution. But uh, just pay attention to the domain and you know which one you're, uh, we're looking for. So that is the solution to this. You can always check it by plugging it back in up here and making sure that sine of negative pi over four plus root two is equal to negative sine of negative pi over four. Now, the key here was getting sine of x by itself. And you're gonna see us treating that expression, sine of x or cosine of x or whichever trig function as a separate variable in the the sooner you can get used to seeing that as, as its own variable, the easier these problems become. Let's try this next one. This is finding a square root, or this is requiring us to use a square root. Notice that I've got, as I'm getting tangent squared of x by itself, I've got tangent squared of x. Remember, that's the same as tangent of x squared. You don't always have to write out that step right there. I just want you to, to remind you that we have that whole function squared. We're actually not squaring the x on the inside of the function. Uh, that's just uh, shorthand writing for square everything there. So to get tangent by itself, we need to square root it. Now, there's one thing you must remember whenever you take a square root. Always remember to write down plus or minus because otherwise you forget one of the solutions. So, plus or minus square root of one third. Tang that, in other words, tangent of x is root one third or, uh, or tangent of x is negative root one third. Now, something about this root one third. That is actually not completely simplified. It's kind of like writing one over the square root of three. The best thing to do would be to multiply the top and the bottom here by root three over root three. And you now should see that, oh, root three over three, that is a more common possible solution for tangent of x. Honestly, this one right here, this one over root three, is usually the one we stumble across first when we're looking for it on the unit circle. So if that helps you find it, great. Let's look for that real quick. I'm, uh, I'm guessing it's one in the top right quadrant because it's positive for positive root three over three. And I, it's not gonna be 45 degrees because tangent of uh, pi over four is one. So it's gonna be one of the other two and I'm just gonna write this one down. Notice I'm looking for sine over cosine, so y over x. That is gonna be one over root three and that is gonna be my culprit. So x is pi over six. The other for negative square root of one-third, that's going to be five pi over six because that's going to put us in the top left quadrant, or you could have negative pi over six. Now, I have a lot of ors here. Some of these ors are very important and some of them are less important, so let me explain that real briefly. This green or right here that I just put the red box around, that is one you must have because both of these are solutions, pi over six and five pi over six. This other one over here, this negative pi over six, I don't know, uh, these two I circled, really depends on the kind of problem you're asking. I'll try to be more clear in the future about 
what the domain is. And when you look at the domain, that's how you pick one of those two. But those first two, pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6, are in some, in some sense, they are different solutions. So it's very important that you write down both of those. It's less important that you write down coterminal angles um, or angles that both have, uh, both have the same output for tangent of x. All right, let's try the next kind of problem. This is going to require us to factor. Uh, in order to do this, I'm going to get all of my trig functions onto one side, which may seem counterintuitive, but let's do that. You notice when I subtract two cotangent of x from both sides, I now have something I can factor out the cotangent. And once I do that, I have cosine squared minus of x minus 2 left. I now see two different things that multiply to get 0, so I can write this as two separate equations. Cotangent of x equals 0, or cosine squared of x minus 2 equals 0. This is another one of those very important ors where we need to follow both of these rabbit holes and get the x value out of both of them because they are separate solutions. Uh, notice when cotangent, I'm thinking of uh, cosine over sine. So when is cosine of x equal to 0? That's going to be at pi over 2. That's when the x value is 0. So one of my solutions is x equals pi over 2. For the other one, I'm going to add 2 to both sides, and I'm going to actually need to take the square root here. Remember, you're plus or minus. And I get cosine of x is plus or minus the square root of 2. So I could write this as x is inverse cosine of x, uh, root 2, or x is inverse cosine of negative root 2. But we have a problem. If you try plugging it into your calculator, your calculator will say uh, something like air domain or something like that. You guys know that if I graph cosine, I'm going to quick sketch it right there. You know the maximum of cosine is 1, the output, and the maximum uh, out, uh, minimum output of cosine is negative 1. That means that the square root of 2 does not show up in the output, and negative root 2 also doesn't show up in the output. So this equation right here is not possible. We can't have any x value that we plug in to cosine that gets us positive or negative square root of 2. And this will happen sometimes. We just need to recognize that that's not possible by thinking about the range of the cosine function. And we need to know that that rabbit hole, rabbit hole is going to end uh, uh, take us nowhere. So the only solution we have is x equals the square root of, t uh, sorry, x equals pi over 2. Now, every once in a while, a uh, question will ask us for all of the solutions. So we know that there's more than just pi over 2 that you can plug into cotangent to get 0. There's actually an infinite number of solutions. Um, so if it's asking for all solutions, pi over 2 works, but so does 3 pi over 2 because cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0, so cotangent of 3 pi over 2 will also be 0. So does 5 pi over 2. And also the negatives, we can't forget those. Negative pi over 2, negative 3 pi over 2, all of those work as solutions for cotangent of x equals 0. So what does that mean? That means that all of these work as solutions to our original equation because they make cotangent of x be equal to 0. Well, what we need to look out for uh, what we need to do is we need a fast way of writing this. So I'm going to write this as x equals pi over 2 plus pi times n. And that n is a shorthand way of writing, well, we often want to say n is an integer. So if n is 0, I get my first solution here. If n is 1, you can add those fractions together, I get the second solution. If n is 2, I get the third solution. And integers are positive and negative whole numbers, so if n is negative 1, I get this solution. Notice it's simply a fast way of writing all the possible solutions. So that makes this the best way to write out all those solutions. All right, next problem we have is a quadratic equation. And I want you guys to notice this. Do you see the similarity between the equation I wrote on the right and the left? I'm just treating the signs as a variable, sine of x as a single variable. And that's what we're going to do when we solve this equation on the left here. If you're stumped on how to factor that quadratic on the left, because that's how we would solve the one on the right, correct? Then I would go ahead and recommend uh, factoring the one on the right, like I just did there, just so you see what it should be. And instead of x, you're going to write down sine of x. So to factor it on the left there, that's 2 sine of x plus 1 times sine of x minus 1. And if you want to Punnett square or multiply that back out, you can just to check and make sure that you got that. Now. Um, that's the equation, so what does that mean? That means that we have 2 sine of x plus 1 equals 0, or 
sine of x minus 1 equals 0. And that's another one of those important ors that we need to follow both of those paths. So we solve for sine of x on the left, then we solve for sine of x on the right. I know that x can be 5 pi over 6 if sine of x is negative 1 half. And I know that x is pi over 2 for sine of x equals 1. Again, you need to write the or, so the solution would be all of those. I cut off my 5. There we go. All of those. So let's get on to this last problem. Uh, one way to uh, solve these is to rewrite them as a single type of trig function. Now you notice here I cannot factor this like I did before because I have sine squared and I have cosine and those are not the same variable or not the same function so I can't factor them all at once like I could before. But you all remember that sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x equals 1. So if I solve for sine squared of x I know that's equal to 1 minus cosine squared of x. So I can replace the sine squared of x with 1 minus cosine squared of x. And I'm going to do exactly that because now I have all one type of trig function and I can factor it like I did on the last problem. So let's do that. Let's multiply that out. Notice I've got a quadratic now. I'm going to factor it so I get negative 2 cosine of x plus 1 times cosine of x minus 1. And this gives us two equations because they multiply to be 0. So it's that one on the left or the one on the right there. And when I solve for that, I get cosine of x equals 1 half or cosine of x equals 1. And I know those solutions are pi over 3 and x equals 0. So again, that's an important or to write there. And those are my two possible solutions. You can always check those by plugging those back into the original equation and make sure that we didn't mess up somewhere. Thank you for watching.